No, that's I felt that very good actually. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> I am Nina Sever, non-binary artist and writer, and I am a rope bottom. Everything. <laughs> everything i i love how i feel alive in rope i feel very very connected to my body uh, it's the only place in which i don't dissociate ever i'm very much present and that's why i like more adrenaline based play i don't like to space out and any of that kind of thing i'd like to process my emotions and pain and everything i feel in my body it's just like it just feels so intimate it's so mine and then and there is this connection I create with the person that's dying me that is just, just wonderful. Hopefully, it's not something that has to come up. I don't want my gender to be much present in my kinky play, whether it's rope or not. Um, so it's nice to go deep enough to let go of any gender expectations or preconception preconceptions is that a word um preconceived um ideas um so of course as a first warm-up play it's nice if i'm not misgendered but then i like to go deep and dark enough just to, to disappear and not even care um if I'm misgendered or not, because I'm just like something else. It's just beyond human. I don't know, it's hard to explain. Learn as much as possible about your own body before listening to any external tapes, which are of course useful, especially coming from experts, but listen to your body, listen to your intuition, emotionally and physically, uh, if something just doesn't feel right, it probably isn't, you know, you don't have to impress anyone, so just, just do what feels good. You know when it's the kind of good that is kind of bad, but it's kind of good, you know that. And when it's kind of bad, but like, I don't know, when you get to the point of like, I don't know if I'm okay with this, that's, that's probably when you should back off or, um, or stop, ask to stop. I moan, I cry, I move my body to a certain extent if I can, like little shifts and little things like if there is a good connection with my top they will notice those little things um, and if something starts feeling wrong either emotionally or um, if I suspect an injury could happen, I just say it because the tone of my voice will obviously change from like, oh, please, no, into like, this has to stop, this feels wrong, obviously. So, um, yeah, just communicate as much possible, non-verbally, as, as much as possible. But then if something has to be said, communicate it quickly because of safety reasons, then I'll, I'll just speak up. No because I like my rope play very intense and very painful and very emotional and I don't think there's enough space for anything else to happen like maybe light impact or some external factors if like I'm being grabbed or my hair is being pulled that's fine as a part of it but like um, yeah that that's pretty much it. It's already like so tough and so intense and effort based and the pain is just like so much to deal with. I, I, I don't think I want to make space for, for other elements because then I lose focus of my own safety and of my emotions and what I want to process, what I don't want to process. Uh, it's, it's, it's easier to keep it simple because simple is not necessarily a lack of, of um, of joy and pain. <laughs> pain is joy, obviously. Uh, they shift and change depending on how I feel on the day and who I am with. Um, 
I don't have that many. I don't like my rope uh, sessions to be sexual. So that takes away a lot of risks in a certain way. Um, my heart, it's, it's, it's hard to tell because um, it really, really depends. Yeah, it, it, it depends on the day. It depends on the mood, it depends if on my period. Uh, it, just, it depends if I don't trust my own emotions. On, on, not, not my own emotions, but my um, um, capacity to process emotions. Then I might set a certain hard limit. Uh, but I like to play in a way that my top kind of feels that hard limit, even if it's not set verbally. Um, and sometimes it's almost a shame to set it because sometimes we go dark and deep enough and I want that being pushed a little bit. So it's it's very personal and it, it just it just changes constantly. So I don't I don't really know. Um, yeah, I guess maybe degradation is, is not my thing. I like being, I like feeling strong and rope and I like encouragement and a bit of shame is welcome. Like when, if someone is taking the pace when I'm struggling, that's kind of fun. But degradation is not something I want to deal with in rope. I don't like aftercare. <laughs> I know it's gonna sound weird, but um, I, if the session goes well and if I'm given a, enough space to process all my emotions, especially when I'm being untied, the pace of it, the intensity of it, um, I don't need aftercare because I already processed everything. So I just come back and I'm like, hey, that was, that was great. So. What I like doing is maybe have a little chat after that if we feel like we want to talk in that moment um, and we can discuss what what happened, what didn't go well, what went well, what, you know, just creating a safe space to talk freely and openly about what we experienced. So um, I think that's important. That's maybe my kind of aftercare. It's either there or it's not. If my intuition is telling me, no, I'm not gonna tie with that person. And if I step into a scene, I'm just gonna trust them 100% and <laughs> hope for the best. But you know, um, I just go really with the gut feeling and so far so good. Um, and then on top of that trust, I like to build, to build a relationship and a, an understanding of each other. Um, so yeah, it's either there or it's not, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs>